from this presentation we will start the registers and as you are in registers you must have studied the flip-flops so what is flip-flop and for what purpose it is used if you remember the difference between the combinational and the sequential circuits you know that there is a difference of the memory block we have memory block and feedback in case of sequential whereas no memory block and feedback in case of combinational so the first problem was to design this memory block and uh, if we can store a single bit data in this memory block we can definitely design the memory block which will store multi bit data so the problem was to store a single bit data and we designed flip flop for this purpose so flip flop is a one bit memory cell it is used to store a single bit data it will store zero or 1 easily there is no problem in doing that and if we can store 0 or 1 we can definitely store 1 0 1 1 and I will call it multi bit data because there are 4 bits involved so this is our prime aim in the registers we have to design something that will store more than 1 bit to increase the storage capacity or I can say that increasing number of bits we have to use group of flip-flops this group of flip-flops is known as register this is the most simple one-line definition for the register it is nothing but the group of flip-flops that is used to store more than one bit and the n bit register will consist of n number of flip-flops and is capable of storing n bit word very simple one flip-flop is used to store a single bit data in the same way n flip-flop will store n bit data and if we want to design a 4 bit register we have to use 4 flip flops so let's do it quickly I am making a 4 bit register so I have to use 4 flip flops and the flip flop I am going to use is D because I just want to store the data no toggling and nothing else so I just want the data to be stored and for this D flip flop is best this is my first flip flop the input is D and the output is Q and in the same way I will use three more D flip flops D, Q and there will be a clock that will govern the operation and this is my clock now there is one very important thing that you have to note the clock is internally connected and applied at the same time this clock is connected to all these four flip flops internally and applied at the same time in sequential circuit clock pulse is not generated individually for every operation but it is generated and given to all the operations by this I mean I'm not going to generate the clock for this flip flop then this flip flop then this and then this I'm not going to generate four different clocks for this flip flops but I will have a same clock and it is given to the different operation so we are bound to follow the clock we are bound to follow the clock and this is a problem in itself I am going to explain why it is a problem for example let's take a clock with a frequency 1 megahertz I'm having a clock with a frequency 1 mega Hertz. this is the frequency and you know that the time period is equal to 1 by F seconds so time for frequency equals to 1 megahertz is equal to 1 micro second so the time period is 1 microsecond and after 1 microsecond we will have the falling edge it is negative as triggered so we will have the falling edge like this these are the two falling edges and the time is 1 microsecond so after every one microsecond whatever you store in this flip-flops will get changed for example if I want to store one zero one one then I have to simply give one as the input to this flip-flop and zero as the input to this one and one in the same way for the last two flip-flops and when the next falling edge arrives this value will get changed that we don't want for example if I want to store my data for hundred micro second so what I have to do because for every one microsecond the data is changing our data is corrupted we have the garbage value what we want to store we are losing it and if something is available forever then we are not going to store it what is the need to store if something is available forever this 1011 is not going to be there forever 
once we have stored this value it will change and we don't have the same combination of bits and for the next clock pulse whatever be the value here is going to be stored again so we are losing our data for this we have to use some independent control we have to use some independent control and this independent control we call as load okay and uh, this load is of two types the first one is the synchronous load the synchronous load and the second one is obviously a synchronous a load for synchronous load the flip-flop will be operational when the clock is high and also the load is high but in case of asynchronous only the load is high to change the value is stored inside so this is the independent control that is in our hand when we make this load high the data will change irrespective of the value of the clock so what i will do if i want to store a particular data 1011 for 100 microsecond i'm going to make this load this load low for 100 microsecond like this is the clock and let's say this time is 100 microsecond 100 microsecond so i will make my load low for this 100 microsecond this is my load and it is low for the 100 microsecond and there will be no change in the register the value stored is not going to change it will be 1011 and there will be clear input you already know what is clear input it will reset our flip-flops and in this case it is going to reset all the values of the four flip-flops this clear this clear is connected inside to all these flip-flops so this is a brief introduction about the registers and in the next presentation we will see the data format and classification of registers this is a very important thing that i have explained you right now especially this load this load is our independent control and we don't want to lose our data for every passing clock pulse that's why we use this load so this is all see you in the next presentation